Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17.733. This build includes a number of new changes and enhancements over the last public preview builds, of which there have been many, and the last build video which was 17.704. So it's been quite a while since the last build video, which appears to be a trend for Redstone 5 for some reason we go through a period where there have been no noteworthy changes in the builds uh, and then a build comes along which has a notable change or changes which warrants a build video this is one of those builds so diving straight in the first noteworthy change in 17.733 is the file explorer specifically its new dark mode dark mode is now complete in the file explorer mostly it, it's looking great now in the previous builds it was almost done when sets was a thing it didn't really need to have a title to bar change but when sets was pulled it turned out the title bar hadn't been themed at all and it was still white when using dark mode in file explorer which looks hideous but in this build they have now made it dark as well which matches the ribbon ui and everything else in the file explorer when in dark mode and frankly it looks pretty great a lot of people have argued saying this bar here should be dark as well and i kind of agree but apart from that the file explorer itself now features a dark mode even the ribbon here has a dark mode which looks great for the most part context menus are also dark which is also really nice I'm, I'm surprised they actually got around to finally doing this dark context menus are dark they were dark before but um not all of file explorer is dark still lots of the property menus and pop-ups and whatnot are still white Cop the copy dialog for example if we copy something here let's make a Oh, I don't have a file big enough to copy paste. Uh, all right, I found windows.old. Let's copy windows.old into our documents just, just to show you what the dialogue looks like. Um, there you go, it's still white. It's Frankly, it burns my retinas as it pops up when using this awesome dark mode. Unfortunately, Microsoft hasn't been able to theme any of the other pop-ups or related dialogues to File Explorer yet, but File Explorer itself is now dark, which is funny because it now sort of it raises a few issues with some of the legacy elements of Windows, such as the control panel. So as you can see, the top of it's dark, which is great, but the actual control panel itself isn't. You can also see up here that in the case of selecting something, this open box, this open icon even, has a white background, which looks terrible. But other than that, it's more or less done. There's still a few weeks to go before Resto 5 is finalized, so I'm sure that they are seeing this internally and still fixing some of the minor stuff. But the more prominent stuff, such as the property dialogues and whatever else, the, the copy dialogue, those likely won't be themed uh, yeah, with dark mode in this release or maybe ever they've not really confirmed that they're going to further add dark mode to file explorer but otherwise the file explorer itself now looks pretty great in dark mode and this is automatically enabled when you enable the setting in the settings app if we quickly go into personalization here we'll go down to colors and change to light you'll notice that file explorer also now switches to light mode we can actually change that to dark here as well just to show you <laughs> there we go okay so it's, it takes a second but it gets there in the end uh so yeah looking pretty nice the other noteworthy change in this build and this isn't a change more of a bug but the um the f reveal effects which i love so dearly are no longer here uh this is a bug it's not supposed to be missing but it's just gone from every element of the system including things like edge and whatnot so those nice reveal effects are missing in this build they'll be back in i guess the next flight that microsoft releases for Redstone 5 i would hope at least uh, but yes for now they are missing and that's pretty much it for this build the dark mode was worth a video on its own but there have been some changes in the previous builds that we might as well go over whilst we're here the first of which is your phone so your phone is something microsoft announced at build earlier this year and essentially it connects to your phone and allows you to share pictures uh, between your phone and pc as well as send text messages and whatever else and see notifications i believe uh, but right now in this initial release it can only do the photo stuff the other features are coming later and so far it works kind of well so it connects directly to your phone via wi-fi and once it's all set up you get your library of photos on your device and as you can see here these are the photos on there not much but this is a photo which if i click on will load up in the photos app as if it was local on my system now i haven't transferred that photo to my pc my phone isn't connected via a cable this is all done wirelessly and it acts just like a local image which is fantastic because i can now jump in here i can edit this photo if i want to we can copy or add a filter and um, change the color of the light and whatnot and i can save a copy 
to the PC and that was now saving to my pictures folder and now I can share that on Twitter or whatever else. I didn't even have to share or send myself an email or plug in my phone to do that. It's just now worked straight through Wi-Fi onto my PC, which is fantastic. And this is the setup process uh, for the phone side of things. So when you connect, when you set up the app for the first time, you'll get a pop-up on your phone from the Microsoft Apps app. So you need to download that from the Play Store first, which will then allow you to press allow. And once you've allowed it, it will then be able to sync into your photos and whatnot. And again, like I said, this will eventually be able to uh, do text messages and whatever else as well. For now though, that's hidden, unless you go through here, in which case you can see the UI, but this function doesn't actually work yet. You'll be able to send new text messages or see current conversations going on on your phone. And you'll be able to reply to them and whatnot through here, which is great. But for now, photos, the photo sharing stuff works really quite well. And uh, that's your phone for the time being. Now, another noteworthy change is that Game Bar now has its own listing in the Start menu here as well. To better advertise it as a thing that exists within Windows, you can still access it with the Windows key and G, but you'll notice that it has an entire new UI in one of the previous builds that was released that we haven't done a video on yet. Uh, this is the new UI, it looks fantastic. This is a Surface laptop, so it's not actually gonna be that useful to me, but if you're a gamer, you can press Windows G now. I believe this works in any game now, I believe, including Win32 ones. Uh, and it gives you this, it gives you performance details such as FPS, CPU temperature, or CPU usage even, GPU usage, and RAM usage, which is fantastic. You can change your audio, system sounds, there's even settings for it here. Collect diagnostic logs if you want to. There's a light dark theme switch, which is <laughs> amazing. You can also record in the background when you're playing a game. So you can use like Xbox record that, except it's on PC, so I guess Windows record that, I don't know. But that will allow you to record the last 30 seconds of a game or something. And there's also more preferences in Windows settings, which if we click, we can see here like that. There's lots of broadcast, this is not new by any means, but you know, there's lots of different gaming options in the settings app for those of you who may not have been aware. But yes, the new game UI, game bar UI looks fantastic, I think. When it's in a game, you get the time as well. You can see the app, this will change. If, you, if I'm running a game such as GTA 5 or Call of Duty, it will say the game that I'm running and stuff. And there's also even a little gaming icon there. So if you sign up with Xbox, you will be able to um, see your profile picture up there and whatever else, which is great. Now, another noteworthy change is being able to ink directly into text boxes is now on by default. So if I pull down my uh, pen here and tap on this, you'll see that now I can just write straight into there. Hello. Oh, that was beyond terrible. But yeah, here, here. that's what I was supposed to say. And I can now do all of that stuff directly within the text box. Now, this is a feature of RS4 but it's now enabled in the RS5 builds by default. It just wasn't enabled by default in RS4 for some reason. Microsoft now deems it ready for enabling by default, and as such, that is what it is in Redstone 5, which is great. That's pretty much it for this build and some of the previous builds as well. Um, we're pretty much at the end of Redstone 5 development at this point, so I'm not expecting any huge new changes to show up in these builds going forwards. The next build video we'll do will likely be of a 19H1, also known as Redstone 6 build, which will be coming in uh which will be shipping publicly in the spring of next year so yeah that's when we those are the bills where we can expect more new features to be showing up over the next few weeks but for now thanks so much for watching and i shall see you in the next one Bye bye